All right. Hello, everyone. Tim Davis coming to you guys with another market review. Today is December the 3rd, Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, December the 3rd, 2023. And we're going to start this weekend off by taking a look at the SPXA 200R, which is the tool that tracks the uh, percentage of stocks trading but at 200 day moving average. And if you've been following me closely, you know that one of the areas I always pay um, close attention to is the 50% level, 50% level of this tool. And normally when you um, get um, drop below it or get above it, well, that's a sign of a, continue, um, a continuation in that particular direction. So it looks like we have finally breached the 50% level. So with that said, um, the overall sentiment of the market is still in a bullish state near term near term I, I, and I want to continue to repeat that and say near term because there's a lot of overhead resistance which which could um, in turn send um, markets and prices the other way sentiment the other way um, and we're, what I'm going to point out here is by taking a look at the weekly and, and the um, daily chart first of this particular tool and show you some possible areas where we can start to see some, some um, resistance so um, last time when we uh, dropped below this level here, um, we seen the sentiment tool reverse back to the upside. And every time we reverse back to the upside, it looks like the area that it started to run into some major resistance is right around here, between that 75 to 80% level. So, um, could we run up to that level? It, it is a huge possibility, um, especially with us uh, being in the end of um, the last month in the year, uh, and you know, with the uh, the ever so known Christmas rally um, that could be possibly upon us. They always say around this month. So we got to wait and see how that pans out. But the overall momentum in this in a particular uh, tool shows in favor of the bulls to the upside. So we could continue. See this momentum indicator climb up at least until that level. So that is something I'll be watching and paying close attention to as we continue to um, travel throughout the rest of, rest of this year. Um, you got the um, RSI showing not over bought yet on this weekly chart. And CCI, I'm sorry, T-Team Squeeze looks like it wants to turn positive. Um, so the, it, there's a lot of momentum in this particular um Momentum in, in the overall market showing in favor of the bulls for right now. With overhead resistance looming in the wind. And um, I want to continue to reiterate that because uh, we could see a sharp reversal if we, the, if we continue to run into overbought territory as we are now on the daily charts on most of the indexes. And I'll show you that here in a second. All right. So that's what we look like temporarily. Like we could be heading towards a level of resistance and then we have to wait and see if we do get to that point and see what happens. All right. Moving on to the VIX. Let me get rid of some of this stuff first. Before we move on to VIX, let's take a look at the uh, uh, near-term daily chart too and show you guys how overbought we are, um, and it, oh, markets look the same way. So if you look at the daily chart, it shows that, the, that this percentage level is showing an RSI of almost 90 already, almost 90 RSI. So that is um, so that is some serious overbought territory on the daily chart. So if we do um, continue to move higher from here, I expect to see an immediate reversal at some point. Um, and we got to see, uh, wait and see what happens if we do get that immediate reversal. All right. Let's switch to the VIX. Now, one thing that I'll be paying very, very close attention to as markets continue to churn high is the VIX because one thing I notice is that when, when markets continue to churn higher and the VIX starts to stall at a level of support, um, that really um, will make you start to pay very close attention if you're in this market on the long side, because if the VIX is not dropping any further and the market is rising at a, at a crazy rate in overbought territory, then that's something that you really need to pay close attention to. That means the VIX has finally found some type of support level. And at any given point, if that VIX starts to catapult higher in a major way, 
it's going to be um, detrimental for the overall markets and we could see an immediate reversal. So with that said, take a look at the VIX and what the VIX has done over the past couple of weeks here. Um, let's look at the weekly chart first. So we pay close attention to this weekly chart on the VIX. You'll see that it's like it, it, it has possibly found a level of support. We see we have been hovering around this level around here between this 1245 to 1260 has been a strong level of support for the VIX um, for the bulk of this year, all the way dating back to May. So since May, we've been getting, every time we got around this level, we found a way to consolidate before going higher. Now, the lowest level we have got to so far is 1245 over this year. 1245. And over the past week or two, we have not gotten back down to that 1245 level. Last week, the markets were rising and, we, and the VIX did not take out that 1245 low. It hovered just above that level. So that is a um a sign that the VIX could be in the process of getting ready to go higher. So that's why I say pay close attention to these overboard levels in the overall S&P, Dow Jones, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the Qs, Triple Qs, and NASDAQ. Pay close attention to these overboard levels and um, watch for some um, reversal candles to start to pop up. All right, let's switch to a daily chart real quick on this. And again, as you can see, in the past several days, we have been hovering, hovering above that 1245. Had not, had not, had not reached back below that 1245 since we hit it. We've just been hovering right around this level. And it, if if I was a bet man, I would say that eventually we're going to see a a, a, a a bounce from this level of support, and possibly in a major way. So I, I'll be looking for some price and blow off tops this week, and and overall marks probably see a little bit more um upside, and it may be quick, and then reversals will probably be just as quick, just as fast, if not even worse. So again, the VIX is hovering around support. Pay close attention to that. If we do not start to see the VIX break below the 1245 in a major way with some huge red candles, then we're liable to see a um, bounce from this level in the very near future. All right, let's switch to the S&P, but I'm going to continue to look at the, um, at the ETF. So I'm going to look at the SPY and show you what makes me to believe that VIX is definitely going to take a, um, a jump soon. Um, here is the uh, SPY, and as you can see, but look at the RSI. We've been in overbought territory in the daily um, for, for quite a while. We've been in overbought territory, it looks like, since around November the 14th. So since November the 14th, RSI has been above that 70 level. It's been in, over, in, in overbought territory for several weeks. So um, I would um, encourage the bulls to not put on that, you know, strong bullish hat and get so over um zealous now that the market is just running to the upside because it's been in over in both board territory on the week on the daily chart for multiple weeks. Not a positive, not a strong positive sign for a continuation to the upside in the near term. And if you look at where we're sitting right now on the daily chart, right around a level of resistance. Right around a level of resistance on the spot. In overbought territory, of course, with the TTM squeeze looking like it's starting to um, lose momentum. So there's something to keep an eye on. Could we go a little bit higher in the, in, in the near term? Yes, we could. That is a possibility. And I do, and, and I would stipulate that just a little bit if we do go any higher before we get a pullback. Now let's take a look at a week, weekly chart because a weekly chart. Definitely something you need to pay attention to when you start to see these big time overbought levels in the daily chart. You switch to weekly to pay attention and see what at, what it looks like as well. See where previous levels of resistance is, is, is showing us in the past. So if we look back all the way back since the beginning of 2022, you can see right where we're at now has been a level of resistance for the SPY. And since 2022, every time we have reached that level, we've seen some sort of pullback. See that? So since the beginning of 2022, we have hit this level, and every time we have been unable to breach it. 
and unable to preach it in a major way. So it leads me to believe that we could be in store for the same thing. All right, so pay close attention that we are hovering at a level of resistance right now as we speak on the on the um, S and P. So on the SPY ETF, and uh, we're hovering at this we're hovering at this level of resistance, a resistance level that we have been struggling with since the beginning of 2022, and we're almost at 2024. So almost two years we've been struggling at this level. Do we break above it now? Uh, if I was a bet man, I would say we do not. Not in a, a, a sustainable way to hold it. So that's a look at the SPY. It's a SPY weekly and daily. All right, now let's switch to the diamonds. DIA, which represents the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is DIA ETF. And it's just breaking away. So this is a daily chart here. And as you can see here, also been in overbought territory since around November the 14th. And it's just continue to gaps up. Right now, an RSI reading is at 90. 90 reading in the RSI. Look at the bottom, bottom left-hand corner. Let me um, highlight it real quick. RSI reading of 90. That is extremely overbought territory. Extremely overbought territory. We're in, we're in an area now of greed. And I can guarantee you that the bulls, that you're going to have some bulls that's going to continue to pile in here, thinking that, you know, this is a brand new bullish market. And we're about to run away to the upside. I, I would beg to differ. I think it eventually is going to be some type of pullback. Could it make it back up to this next level of resistance? That is, that's a possibility. But if we, this daily chart is really showing me um, reason for um, big time caution moving forward for the bulls. Let's switch to a weekly chart real quick. Weekly chart, and it's finally starting to show overbought territory on the RSI on the weekly. So that is also something that you want to pay close attention to because normally, um, so like whenever we've hit the overbought territory on the RSI on the weekly, we normally see some kind of reversal start to form. We hit over. But here on our side, back in November of 2021, and when we hit that level, which was right here, probably went up just a little bit more, and then we started to pull back. Overbought level here around November of 2022, and price action reversed up a little bit more and reversed much more. And here we are now, overbought territory. So with multiple green weeks in a row, that, that makes it even more detrimental. Multiple green weeks in a row. I like it it's back here, red and green, multiple green weeks in a row. That I call that a stale green light, folks. Stale green light. We've been rising multiple weeks in a row, all the way up to overbought territory on a weekly chart. That's a stale green light to me. And we're starting to hit on overbought territory on RSI. Somewhere between here and this upper level of resistance, I think we're going to see a sharp reversal. So that's something to pay close attention to. Um, again, the, 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 the VIX is giving us fair warning because it's hovering at a level of support and has not been dropping below the, that, um, that level of support for a long time. It's been hovering there with the markets um, continuing to move higher. So that would give me um, you know, um, reason for big time caution as we uh, continue to see the markets rally in this overbought state. All right, so we looked at the weekly and the daily on the diamonds. Let's take a look at the weekly and the daily on the triple Qs. Triple Qs is already starting to stall. So there's a weekly chart on triple Qs which represents the NASDAQ. See, we got up to this level and it's like, we are just starting to go sideways. With those two green candles showing almost the same high and low over the past two weeks, right at a level of resistance, right at a level of resistance. Could we go high? We could, this is the next level of resistance right around this 402 level, around 401, 402. 
and right around where we at now, 390 is also a level of resistance. So um, could we go higher? That we could. Is it um, more likely that we do? It's more likely that we find a way to stall here before pulling back. That is a weekly chart of the Qs. Let's switch to a daily chart. Qs, as you can see, overbought territory, and looks like it's starting to trying to come out of what territory already on a daily chart on the queues. Got up to around 390, 394, and it's like we start to pull back, hovering just above the 20 print movement average. So if we drop below that 20 print movement average in a, in a significant way, we can see um, the queues start to trickle lower um, before everything else. And there's a gap fill right here. So at least we can see a pull back to that gap if we start to, if we drop below this um, 20 print movement average. You can see a pullback to this gap fill, and that will bring price action right down to about 378 or 380. Between 378 and 380 on the Qs. So that's a, a look at the daily chart and the weekly chart of the Qs. Switch to the IWM. Here's an IWM. Out of all the ones that I think that that still has a um has momentum, I mean enough momentum to to to, to swing. Up just a little bit higher, I think it's IWM because this has been the one that's been the laggard of everything else. So I think the Russell could go a little higher uh, with everything else stalling, and Russell could make it all the way back up here to this level of resistance, which is right around 190 to 191. That's a possibility because this is a daily chart, and we're just starting to breach the overbought territory, and it only shows the um an RSI reading of 77. Unlike the others, RSI reading is much higher. This one shows an RSI reading of 77. So could we go um, further overbought as a possibility? We had a strong green candle on Friday. Which, I mean, a strong green candle on Friday with um, increasing volume, which leads me to believe that increasing volume on a strong green candle on Friday spells to me that we could be going a little bit higher here in the near term. Switch to a weekly chart. And a weekly chart, unlike the, um, some of the others, we still haven't even reached the overbought territory yet on the weekly with an increase in volume here. So again, it would not shock me to see the Russell out of all the other major markets continue to trickle high up until we hit this level of resistance. So that's a possibility for the IWM and the small caps. All right. And then we'll wait and see what happens when we, if we get to this level, because again, once we get to the level, we're starting to hit around this areas of strong areas of resistance where we've been, we've seen pullbacks in the past. All right. Now I want to talk a little bit about gold, gold, silver, and oil before we move on or before we end this um, recording. So, I've been watching gold for a very long time and um and waiting for, you know, watching to see how prices continue to move. And we've been in a um in a in a, in a, a pretty nice little uptrend in gold since we came out of this uh consolidation area. So we are seeing gold prices do some consolidation when it got up to around this um two hundred around this uh twenty two well I said twenty one or 2085 level, I've seen gold prices just kind of like not really, not even really downtrend, but it's been consolidating, moving down into this this range, and then it's starting to break out above this this range. And it's putting gold in a position that it is setting up in a position where it could see a massive breakout to the upside, breakout of um. Long, longer term, I mean, break out to new all time highs in a major way. Look at it as a weekly chart. We see we're sitting right at a level of resistance right now, just starting to um, go into overbought territory. And we only see an RSI reading of 70. And as you've seen with um, some of the other indexes I showed you, they, they got RSI readings almost 90. So could we see gold continue to power high here as a huge possibility with the weekly chart only showing RSI right around 70? Let's take a look at the daily chart. 
daily chart showing an RSI right around 81. Um, so we could consolidate here. We could continue to go high and break out above 2100, which is what I do, do believe we're going to see eventually um, in, in, in the near term. Um, could we get a slight pullback here? That's a possibility. But this overall strength, the longer term overall strength for gold is, is extremely strong. Let me show you guys what the um, monthly chart looks like. This is, what, this is what makes me believe that we are about to see a major breakout in gold. Looking at this monthly chart, you see how we, you know, um, when we did breach or got close to this level before in the past. Yeah. Got close to this level before in the past, and we've seen failures back in 2020. We've seen a failure back in, uh, in 2022, seen a failure right around here. Again, in 2023, we've seen a failure. But look what price action did. We did not go back down to these lows. Price action came down, found a level of support ahead of time, and started to move higher. And look what's happening with the um, 20 per moving average. It is in a nice, steady uptrend. Even when price broke below this 20 per moving average, 20 per moving average did not break lower. It continued in this nice steady uptrend, which leads me to believe that we are possibly in a longer term uptrend with gold, um, according to the monthly chart. And right back at this level again. So I do think we're going to see a major breakout here in some form or fashion in the near term with gold. So um, with that said, I've been watching this for a second and I parked myself in a GDX, a longer term GDX call. I got into that about a month ago and it's been faring well. So my timing was, was, was pretty good on this one. I'm gonna look at one more time frame quarterly chart to show you guys how it looks like it's definitely showing. The goal wants to show some strong leadership, strong breakout to the upside in, in the um in the near term. So quarterly chart starting to show that the RSI is like it wants to go into overbought territory. And look how we are pressing on this level of resistance with a strong green candle, strong green quarterly candle. That is a definite positive signal for the bulls. So I think it's inevitable that this next quarter could be this over this next throughout this next quarter. We could see a major upside to go uh, maybe reaching that 2200 level before we get to uh, mid uh, before we get to um to June. So that's a huge possibility. Again, um if you've been paying attention, you have uh decided to um protect your uh your portfolio with a little bit of gold because gold like it is in a good space. Like we're in a good space with gold. So it's been marching to the upside. Every pullback has generated more upside. And again, I love the miners. Again, so GDX is one that I have really been focusing on. It's 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 it is, it's still right hovering and look at the quarter side, it's hovering around this level. Around this 20, 20 for moving average on the quarterly. And it's just waiting for its um, move. We look at the monthly chart, you can see it's starting to get movement. Three months in a row so far, starting to get nice movement to the upside. Look at a weekly chart. GDX just starting to break out to the upside above the 20 per moving average. Like 20 per moving average just starting to curl up to the upside. So again, I think mine is definitely going to be a good place to be. I think before long, Maybe over the next couple of weeks, maybe even the next month, we could see GDX break above 40 before spring. That is um, my strong belief. That's one of the reasons why I picked up a couple of calls on this one about a month ago, and it's doing pretty well right now. All right. And with that said, we'll take a look at, let's look at the daily chart here first. Daily chart does so overbought territory right around 85 RSI. Could we see more movement to the other side? We could, but I, I do expect we could see some type of pullback here, maybe back to the 20 per moving average and then continue to go higher. Every pullback has been a great buying opportunity. So pay very close attention to gold and these gold stocks. Also, silver right behind gold. 
starting to get his move as well. So here's silver. Um, current daily chart shows silver hovering just below a level of resistance in overbought territory with the RSI reading of about 85 on a daily. So you could see it tip a little bit higher. I do expect this is running into some resistance, maybe have a slight pullback to the moving average. But if you look at the daily, I mean, the weekly chart, I'd like it's ready to break out in a major way. So this level up here has been a strong level of resistance for um, silver, right around this 2650 level. So if we hit that level, breach it, we could see a you know, pullback for a test before we get the next move higher. And I think next move higher will be a big one. Look at the monthly chart. Does not even show breakout yet. Does not even show breakout yet with the possibility to break out lumen. So these next couple months, folks, is probably going to be very, very good for gold and silver. Just wanted to point that out to you guys. Now let's one more, and that is crude oil. This crude oil can be iffy because, you know, it, it, it's a lot of things it relies on. But look at the technicals. The technicals have been showing crude trying to hold between this range. So... Right between a 70, 71, 72 level up to around this 84 to 85 level. Got above it just a little bit here in September. And we're back in this range. And this range has been strong, folks. This range right here that, that I got highlight, it's been a very strong, strong range for crude. And it looks like this is the range that it wants to find a way to break down below or break out of. If, it was, if I was a bet man, I would say, look at this monthly chart. It's like it's it's like it's building up momentum, building up some um you know some some steam, with the possibility of a breakout out of this range. So every pullback into this range, it's like it's been a buying opportunity. So we're back in that range. Look at the monthly chart. Look at the um weekly chart. Tried to go into over um sold territory on RSI. RSI reading of about thirty. That's hitting oversold already. And look what's happening. Look at the, these candlesticks. No long, um, solid candles, just um, small bodies with these wicks, upper, upper wicks, lower wicks. That's showing me consolidation, folks. Consolidation. It's like crude oil is consolidating in the range for a possible breakout or breakdown. We have to wait and see. Um, if we get a, a, a pushback above the 20 pair moving average, then more than likely that, that, that this, this consolidation was a setup for a breakout above that 20 per and, and out of this range. So we have to wait and see. But it's like consolidating now. I think this week is probably going to be um, the determining factor, and it's probably going to make a decision, possibly going to make a decision this week um, if we don't get another candle such as one of these. Uh, so we're going to get a breakout above the 20 per moving average, or we're going to get a breakdown. It looks like we are already hovering around over, uh, hovering around um, RSI around 30, which is oversold area. And it looks like we are still consolidating. Currently, no major moves to the downside. So it leads me to believe that we could possibly be in store for a move higher by looking at this um, consolidation on a weekly chart. So the past couple of weeks, we've been just been consolidating here. So let's see what a month, um, weekly, I mean, sorry, daily chart shows us. Again, one thing I do like to point out here, which also makes me believe that we could see higher prices in oil, is that if we look at um, look at the RSI on the daily here. See how we breached below the 30 level here? And we breached below it again here. And then all of a sudden, you see, it's starting to create these higher lows. Creating these higher lows and higher lows and higher highs in RSI. See how we've not broken back below the 30 level on RSI? And steady coming out of the overbought, oversold territory on RSI. And it looks like it's ready to turn back up again. So that's what gives me um, hope for um, crude is that we've been pulling back here slowly, but off and on. But the RSI has not been uh, reciprocating the pullback. So we continue to create higher highs and higher lows in the RSI um, oscillator as price action churns down here and churns the pullback. Leads me to believe that we could definitely be setting up for some type of move, uh, move to the upside. 
Uh, we saw crude back in September, right around 95. Since then, we've seen um, price action continue to pull back, but we got down below this level here and we started to consolidate down here. And if you look at the um, 20 per moving average, it's just been continuing to go down. However, it's like it's starting to stall right around here. And we've been, RSI, I mean, the 20 per moving, we've been below this 20 per moving average for quite some time, so, which leads me to believe that it's about time for a move higher in a bigger way. So pay close attention to crude, pay close attention to gold and silver, and be mindful of the overall markets, which are hovering around some strong levels of overbought territory. All right? All right, folks, that's all I have for you guys. Give you guys a mouthful because there was a lot to unravel um, by looking at the technicals. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.